Caroline Dowd Higgins. Thanks for listening to Your Working Life, my podcast series featuring thought leaders in the career and personal growth arena. You spend a significant portion of your life at work, so I'm on a mission to provide you with tools, inspiration, and resources so you can enjoy your career and love your life. And I'm delighted to welcome my very special guest to the show tonight, Dr. Morton Shavitz. Welcome, Dr. Shavitz. I'm so pleased that you're with me. I'm pleased to be with you as well, Caroline. Well, we're going to have a juicy conversation about your new book, but before we get started, I want to tell the listening audience all about you. For more than three decades, Dr. Morton Shavitz has been inspiring individuals and organizations to grow and change through his clinical practice, organizational consulting, training programs, and presentations. His current interests are assisting individuals to explore new models of productive aging and helping organizations develop transition programs for their valued older employees. His latest book, Refire, Don't Retire, Make the Rest of Your Life the Best of Your Life, is co-authored with Ken Blanchard and was just published recently. So I'm delighted that you're able to spend some time with me tonight on the show. So let's just cut to the chase. What was your goal in writing this book, Dr. Shavitz? Well, we actually had three goals. The first was to help older adults view getting older as an opportunity as opposed to a sentence and to begin to embrace uh, older years. And it was originally written with a focus on older adults and their middle-aged children. Okay. Uh, okay. Our, our second goal was to begin to address the brain drain in organizations as more and more senior executives are leaving the workforce and we don't have enough people coming up to be able to replace them. And so we've come up with a, uh, an idea of a refiring program for, uh, for organizations. And I think the third, uh, which we kind of anticipated, but we've gotten a rather robust response since the book was published, was to begin to see refire as a metaphor for life. Mm. As a way of approaching life with energy and enthusiasm. And what we're finding is, is that it's just as easy for a 40-year-old to get stuck in a rut as for a 60-year-old. So, we're, so, so the, the other message is, you know, you only have one life, uh, and that's why the subtitle is make the rest of your life the best of your life, and if the rest of your life begins at 40 as opposed to 60, that's just fine. Well, that is music to my ears. As a career and executive coach, you know, you, I am just smiling ear to ear. I know we're on podcasts, so you can't see me, but it is so important for people to know that you always have control and you can always change your mind or refire, right? It's never too late and it's never too early. It's never too late it's, and it's never too early. And the first step is to begin thinking differently. <laughs> And then the second step is to begin behaving differently. Yes. It's, often, it's what you do as well as what you think that's going to make the difference. So we encourage action. We encourage action in uh, four different areas. Uh, we encourage people to refire intellectually, you know, to, mm -hmm. keep, to keep the mind alive and, and to do it in a way in which you put yourself into new and different and challenging situations. And while puzzles and games may be fine, it's really solving problems that keeps us sharp. It's learning new things that keeps us sharp. It's being in situations where we're not the expert, but the learner. That's a way to refine intellectually. And I, I love that because that concept can be just as true in your 40s as it might be in your 60s when you're contemplating retirement at that official retirement generation that Americans have defined, which is changing, as we both know. Well, it's dramatically changing. The, you know, the, the old model of the honorary dinner. <laughs> right, with the gold model. watch. Right, right. And, 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 the, and the, the, you know, the speeches, and then you're off on your own. Uh, that's no longer there. That's really changing. And it's changing for a couple of reasons. One, uh, as we said, for organizations, it's too expensive to lose these people. Yeah. But the other thing is, is that men and women don't want to be just put out to pasture. They right. want a life after the company. And so they are, they are moving into all sorts of new models. One of them is called phased retirement, which deals with the legal and financial parts. But we, we're, we really promote the idea of refiring 
the individual within the organization so that everybody wins. Brilliant. So let's talk about the word retire. And I, I applaud that you're saying, hey, let's retire that word. So tell me more about that. Well, it just doesn't fit anymore. Uh, you know, we do know that for people whose uh, careers and work represent a great deal of physical labor and effort, the idea of no longer having to do that really does sound appealing. But even for those people who physically, uh, who are physically challenged, the notion is, is that they want to be looking at where they're going. Right. So, so to retire, when you think about retire, what does it mean? What, when one retires, you go to sleep, right? Right, so, right. It's, it was, it's an end, right? It's not a beginning. Traditionally, it's, it's an end. And refiring is waking up. Nice. So our goal is to wake people up. And, you know, we said wake them up, you know, intellectually. We say we want to wake them up emotionally as well because that's right. the, the second pillar of refire. And emotionally, we start off with relationships. And we say two things. One, uh, deepen the relationships that you have with the people who are currently in your life, friends and family. But the other thing is to reach out to new people. Yes. To form new relationships. You know, somebody said, it ain't over till it's over. And, <laughs> and, Good you know, stuff. It's kind of simple. For people who are at work and there's a lunchroom there, rather than going to the same table and meeting with the same people that you've been meeting with week after week, year after year, go to another table. Say, yeah. Hi. Yeah. Or in Shavitz. Uh, I don't think I know you guys, but I work up in, you know, I work up in the uh, executive area. What do right, you guys do? Right, right. And then you begin to develop new relationships. We, we, we talk about, in Refire, talk about a true story of one man who had been living in a neighborhood for a number of years. That nobody knew one another. It was one of these you all drove out in the morning. So what he did, decided to do, he sent out an invitation to about 30 neighbors in his area, and he invited them over for a potluck dinner, but also said for any of them who want to, they can ha also have a sleepover. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, and people said, what do you mean to sleep over? It's dangerous. Well, as a matter of fact, one of the men who they had known for a long period of time decided he would take them up on it. So it was, they had a dinner with a bunch of people, and everybody left, and the guy did, they did a sleepover, they had breakfast the next morning, <laughs> and they went for a walk, and they came back. They I just had it. an incredible They had a great time, yeah. And, and, and it began to, to spread within the neighborhood. So this is the wacky neighborhood in which, you know, people in their 50s and 60s and 70s are having sleepovers. That's brilliant. But, you know, what I love about that, Morton, is you are using different muscles, right, whether they're physical muscles or, or, or brain power, when you engage in new relationships, right, because it's not automatic. It's not safe. Right. And I don't mean that it's unsafe. I'm just saying it's not expected. Right. It's not comfort zone. And I think challenging ourselves for new relationships makes so much sense in, in refiring. So thank you for that. Yeah. And, you know, we, we know that that happens when we, uh, you know, when we travel to another country or even right. to another state. But it can happen just as much when you travel to a different group, yeah. a group that you haven't spent time with before. So what are some of the other areas in which we can refire? You talked about intellectually, emotionally, talked about solving problems. What else do you have? Well, the third one that we talk about, and you had, you had alluded to it, is refiring physically. Mm. And, uh, you know, refiring physically, sometimes people think, oh, God, you know, that means doing marathons. And Don't make me. <laughs> right. right. Mark, you know, counting. Uh, no, it really isn't that way. It's actually, we, we, can't, we promote the idea of the minimally effective dose on the physical side. So what is it that you want to achieve? You want to achieve cardiovascular health, some degree of flexibility and endurance. What we find on the physical part is if we could get, if I could get, 80% of adults over 60 walking 30 to 45 minutes a day, five to six days a week, I would make a major impact on chronic disease. Oh, yeah. So for anybody who will do that or the equivalent of that, that's all you need to do. You don't have to go to a gym. It doesn't have to be 100 push-ups. It doesn't, you know, doesn't have to be, how about you know how to walk if you don't. By the way, for those who who are not able to walk, good physical therapist will give you an equivalent kind of exercise. So the, the physical exercise is actually pretty simple. 
The food stuff, which is you don't want to get fat and you don't want to get sick and you don't want to get sick and fat, is right. actually not too difficult either. Okay. And it doesn't mean counting calories, grams of fat, you know, grams of carbohydrates, you know, all of the special exotic eating programs that you do for two weeks and then stop. It means making, look, so first of all, eat less. Yeah. Most of us can eat a third less, make no changes at all, and we would feel healthy. The second thing is, be, well, I was going to say be smart. It's don't be dumb. <laughs> so does that mean you have to give up pizza forever? Of course not. But how about two pieces of pizza rather than a whole pizza? Yeah. yeah. How about a, a glass of wine with dinner as opposed to a half bottle of wine? So it's making reasonable choices. And, and the other thing is, go for quality. You know, there's a big movement now, natural foods and close-grown foods, Part of it is, is maybe marketing, but a lot of it is absolutely true. So go for things that are easy, eat in reasonable amounts, enjoy what you eat, and then don't worry about it. So uh, I think in some sense, oh, the other two things is be flexible. Stretching is very nice. Uh -huh. The other thing is, particularly for older adults, sometimes there's an issue of losing balance. But balance is a really easy thing to regain and there are some simple exercises for that. So refiring physically, again, is not getting ready to run a marathon, but it's being able to feel vigorous and energetic, uh, to be able to go out for an afternoon walk, to be able to walk to the movies, to park your car far away. All yeah. of the things that we know what to do but we don't do them. Well, and thank you for saying enjoy it, right? This is yeah. not a prison sentence. This is enjoy your life, right? And Absolutely. enjoy that you can walk from the far end of the parking lot to the movie theater or wherever Absolutely. you're going. Absolutely. And, and by the way, we, we, we all say every once in a while, go to see a movie that you wouldn't have chosen for yourself. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's part of the intellectual stretch. Good. So yeah. you uh, you co-authored the book with Ken Blanchard, and right. you talk about the last minute gang. So Morton, well, tell me about that. Well, the last minute gang is is kind of a structure that encourages spontaneity and risk taking, and it goes something like this: When you're a member of the last minute gang, and one or two people generally will start this, and you invite each of you invite three or four people. So you have a group that's between maybe eight or ten. Okay. The rule of the last minute gang is, Carolyn, if I call you at seven o'clock at night and I say, Carolyn, how about, you know, we're going out to, we're going out to an engineering exhibition and we're going to eat uh, <laughs> Taiwanese food before. And the last thing, in a sense, that you might want to do is to go to an end. But if you remember the last minute gang, unless you are committed to do something else, you have to say yes. So unless there's a real reason to say no, you say yes. And guess what, Caroline? You might find that you might have a great time. Yeah. And have a time and find out things that you never knew before. So the last minute gang is encouraging each of us to be spontaneous in terms of reaching out and encouraging each of us to be risk-taking yes. in terms of responding. I love that. And, and it's an accountability group, right? To say, okay, you're in. That's you're right. going. We're going to have a good time. Well, so it doesn't, be, it doesn't have to be everybody. People wind up being in places they never thought they were going right. to be. Right. And they have terrific. And, you know, and if it's not such a great time, so what? It's one evening. You know? Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. So good segue, Morton, right? Well, we've all heard of getting out of one's comfort zone, right? But how does that apply to our everyday lives, especially through the refire lens. Okay. Well, you know, the one example I talked about was going to a new table at work. Yeah. But you know, most of us do the same things over and over again, and often with the same people and in the same way. And, you know, most people go out to eat, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's frequently or infrequently. And we get into one our comfort zone. So we go to the same restaurant and order the same thing. So the first thing is, is that Go to a different restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> okay? And the second thing is when the serving person comes over, say to that person, you know, don't tell me, but bring me the best the thing that you think is the best thing that this restaurant cooks. Very what, nice. Yeah. Right? And as one guy said, you know, I never knew I like duck, but the reason <laughs> I didn't know I like duck is because I never eaten duck. There now you go. I've tasted it. 
Now I like it. People get a little twitchy. Oh, what if, what if it's not good? All right, what if it's not good? It's one lousy meal. Right, I mean, right. You order something else and take the <laughs> risk. <laughs> the oh. next, but imagine having had an experience that you weren't anticipating. Love it. Love it. So again, it just heightens your senses, right? And makes you experience something on a totally different level. So thank you for illustrating that. So helpful. So you and Ken also talk about the phrase, make the rest of your life the best of your life. So what does that mean? Well, it's really a different way of looking at aging. Uh, there is, uh, there's a lot of research going on at this point in terms of things called successful aging or new models of aging. And what we find is, is that the vast majority of older adults actually are less depressed than their 30-year-old counterparts. Wow. Uh, a number of us are more financially secure than we expected to be. And even though we know, of course, you get sicker as you age, and we also know, you know, the, the, the big two, A and B, Alzheimer's and dementia, mm -hmm. but those things occur later and they are occurring. And a significant number of us are not going to have that happen. Uh -huh. The notion is, is that if you're anticipating the worst, then you don't get to experience the best. Mm. So, so make the rest of your life, the best of your life says, yes, you know, whatever you can do to bring interesting things, to bring joy, to bring excitement, to be able to give back. Uh, Ken and I also talk about moving from success to significance. To nice. say, you know, particularly for a number of people who have been fortunate enough to be successful, now it's not just giving back, it's giving to. Mm. It's not just writing a check, it's giving your time. It's not just, right, uh, you know, buying the subscription, it's actually using your talent. And so, and, and when you do that, uh, you feel a lot better. And by the way, I skipped the other part, I think, which was the spiritual part. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, so, so the fourth pillar is spirituality, and spirituality does not mean religion. Got it. You can be anywhere on, you know, the atheism to devout believer continuum and still have a spiritual dimension. So what we really talk about is think about uh, what, where you are, how you were brought up, and then determine how you want to relate to the universe as you experience it. And it doesn't have to be through prayer, but it can be. Mm -hmm. But it can be any way in which you enhance your view of yourself and your relationship to those around you and to the world around you. Brilliant. So, Morton, you said something interesting at the beginning of our interview. You said that, surprisingly, in, in a very good way, you're seeing 40-somethings, right, Generation Xers, saying, hey, this applies to me. And that was unexpected, right? Well, you know, we when, when we sent out the book originally for some reviews, we got a little bit of that twinkling coming back. But as the book has been out and has been read, we get re something, they get something like this from a 40-something. He said, well, I actually got this book for my parents ah. because I know that. And then he said, but then I began reading it. And I suddenly said, hell. Oh, it applies to me. Yeah. That applies to me. And the whole idea is that 30 or 40-somethings can have their life out of terrible balance. If all yeah. you're focusing on is career stuff, you find that you've lost issues of relationship with family, with friends, and so you can be terribly out of balance. So the refiring is stepping back and saying, okay, where am I now? Where do I want to be? And how do I want to get there? And then to begin to say, I can do this. You know, yeah. the other thing is, yeah. as you know, Caroline, that at this point, careers are no longer lifetime careers. Most Absolutely. of us are going to be making three or four or five changes even more somewhere along the line. And so it's being open to new experiences. It's being open to a lateral move in your organization. It's being open to take a very different vacation than the kind that you've taken in the past. You know, it's, it, it is, it is, re-fire is to think about the two, redo again, and fire is the kind of energy that we're talking about. And we want to help people to get energy into their lives. And so, yeah, so refiring, we think, is a metaphor <clears throat> for how you want to live your life. And it applies to all age groups. Uh, and uh, it's, it's fine for you to decide you're going to do that in your 30s and 40s, too. And you know, surprisingly, a number of people are doing that.
Oh, I have no no doubt. It's it's a great tool. So so let me ask you again, putting my career development hat on. You know, obviously this is such an appeal to individuals in a variety of generations. I hope that you and Ken are going into companies and talking about this. What a great tool within organizations, right? To say, hey, we've got this terrific talent. You know, a reversal of the brain drain of all generations. Is that part of your uh, part of your your setup? It is part of our setup, and it's it's, it's interesting. The um, as you said, you know, the traditional model of gold watch and so on doesn't work. But the brain drain is very is interesting because with this trapezoid like population, yeah. uh, you know, many many more people at the top than at the bottom. As they leave, it's too difficult to replace them. So yes. we so the first thing that came about was something called phased retirement. And that began maybe seven or eight years ago, maybe even longer. And phased retirement focused primarily on legal and financial issues. How could people go less than full time and still maintain benefits and so on? But we want to go in a very different direction. So we, we're kind of conceptualizing a refiring your company uh, a program. And, and it goes something like this. Once you've decided to do that, you give your senior executives, and I'm using executives to begin with, it may well go down to others, in the 60 to 65 year range to become involved in the refiring program. The refiring program then has the following elements. Over a period of years, and that gets determined by the individual and the company, you begin to reduce the number of hours you're at work. So you go from full time to not to 80% time and so on. Now, obviously, there's a commensurate reduction in salary, but that's okay because it's gradual and you get to be able to adjust to that. And the, the second financial part is that even during this transition phase, you maintain full benefits. So for the company, basically, they're beginning to save money year one when I go down to 80% time. Yeah, Seven, what a great business model. Yeah. Right. Second thing that the company does is, and, and these are not just, you know, uh, soft-hearted companies, organizations do care about what happens to their employees. So the refiring program, the second element of that would be what, we, what we've just talked about, which is helping older adults begin to find significance, to figure out how they can contribute, what they can do. To, re, to begin their refiring intellectually, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. So it's the program is for them. The third thing it does, it allows them to begin training their subordinates without any risk. You know, so I'm a senior guy, and you're you're this very hotshot young woman who is kind of coming and and the succession at, plan, right? That's the succession. next generation. Yeah, the succession plan, but it's it's not just. I leave and you step into my role, it okay. is over a two or three year period, I mentor you. Yes, I, and you groom I, me. Yep, yep. I groom you. I have you meet the, the senior clients. I have you take on more supervisory responsibilities. So at the end of that period of time, when I step away and you step in, you've been doing it. So, yes. so, so this is this is huge. It's a, it's a everybody wins. I mean, so the company wins, the employee wins, and the other pe people in the organization win. So, you know, we're, we're looking to, to get a, a small number of really excited companies excited about this, and we're going to implement that sometime in the next year. Well, that is thrilling, and you'll have to come back and tell me all about it. And I have to tell you, I am eager to have people in my coaching practice read your book, and I'm delighted that our listeners can hear all about it. I wish you and Ken great success, and I thank you for joining me on the show. Absolutely. So for people who are interested, they can. the book is on Amazon. They can go to refirebook.com, and they can also go to the major bookstores. Uh, the book is available then. It's just been out a little bit over a month. And uh, we're really excited that so many people are excited. Absolutely. Now, let's also talk about social media because you have a very active presence on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. And tell me about Goodreads. Uh, Goodreads is uh, one of the areas that kind of features uh, new books and, uh, and authors. And so we have a presence on Goodreads as well. 
Fantastic. Well, Dr. Morton Shavitz, thank you so much. What a joy to have you on. I wish you great success. I thank you for this book, and I thank you for your time tonight. Thank you very much, Carolyn. I've enjoyed our time together, and what I'm leaving you with is, okay, Caroline, refire. Oh, you got it, my dear. Uh, you got it. Thank you for that. I am energized, and I want to thank you all for listening to Your Working Life, where my goal is to help you design your career destiny so it doesn't happen by default. In fact, refire. True career and life satisfaction is possible, and it's time to embrace what you love doing so you can do more of it. I'm Caroline Dowd-Higgins. Take good care.